Do eggs cause diabetes? Should I tell people not to eat eggs anymore? I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and I was sent a video, Are Eggs Good or Bad for You? from Mastering Diabetes. Now, we've seen videos from here before, and they do tend to have a plant-based bias, uh, but let's see uh, their rationale for eggs being bad. I, mean, I need to say that when someone eats an egg, just an egg, the blood sugar doesn't go up. I mean, you, you can test this now by using a finger stick blood sugar meter, a, a, a continuous glucose monitor. Um, you don't have to trust anybody else. So from a nutrition, uh, medical, obesity medicine, internal medicine, diabetes standpoint, eggs do not raise the blood glucose. It seems very implausible that eggs just by themselves would increase the risk for diabetes. This is just not, it doesn't have glucose, doesn't have carbohydrate in an egg. So let's see what the argument is. Oh, because I think he's going to say eggs are bad. <laughs> I get a little bit frustrated when people say that there's no evidence or there's insufficient evidence to indicate that there's a positive association between egg consumption and diabetes risk or between egg consumption and cardiovascular disease risk in people living with diabetes. There is a... Uh, oh, okay, so um, but listen very carefully. He's tired that people say there's no association. I want causation. And this is going to be the big difference between a clinical trialist, evidence-based medicine doctor, and a epidemiologist who doesn't get into the trenches. You, you always look at associations. And association does not mean causation is a mantra that you should have by now after watching my videos wealth of scientific data. And we have seen in both small scale studies and large scale studies that the data trends in the same direction. Okay. There's, it can be confusing. I get it. I can, I, I'm the first person to admit that myself, but if you see just how much research there is, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you know, meta analysis after meta analysis, after meta analysis, after case control study, after randomized control trial, after epidemiological study. And most of these studies show the exact same thing. Well, so let's pull one out. <laughs> a lot of those went by. And, uh, you know, you can cherry pick a few studies that have some positive results and cherry pick some that have negative results. That's the purpose of a meta-analysis, which is to increase the sample size, the number of people. You combine all these different studies to see if combining the, um, the ones that are for and against uh, will even it out or maybe make a, one of the associations stronger. But again, this is association. And, and so I pulled out one of the papers uh, from the European Journal of Nutrition 2018. And this is, a uh, again, a nutritional epidemiology kind of study so that um, you're not randomizing people prospectively, following them over time. Um, and the associations in the, oh gosh, it goes back to the Austin Bradford Hill uh, um, criteria for causation. You you want a, a risk. Uh, if you do have association, you want uh, an association. Of one means there's no risk, and if it get, the farther it goes away from one, the more uh, association there is. And then if you get to you know a, a, an association of say five, ten, twenty, or or a reduction down to you know point two point one you're going to actually think, wow, this is a big association. we got to look into this. You would never get a randomized trial of cigarette smoking, but the association in these epidemiology studies was way out here. So if you look at egg consumption among carb eaters, because that's what's happening in these studies, they eat carbs. Remember, if you don't eat anything but eggs, your blood sugar won't go up. I reverse diabetes by having people eat eggs without the carbs. But if someone's eating carbs and eating eggs, the association in this one study, and this is one of the highest ones I could find, was 2.87. So let's say three. So the highest egg consumption of greater than five eggs a week, there was an increased uh, impaired glucose tolerance or, or diabetes of three to one. Three to one. And it was statistically significant. The statistics, um, you can get a statistical significance even if that relative risk is 1.1, which, you know, is trivial in terms of, of clinical relevance. So at the highest, at, at worst, it was three to one. And, you know, that it's 
an interesting association and that this kind of thing is called hypothesis generating. You turn it around and let's feed people eggs and feed people that many eggs and say to this other group, you can't have that many eggs and let's follow them over time. And then you would get the causative experimental uh, uh, ability to say causation. But right now, again, it's just an association and the practical day-to-day clinical relevance is you eat an egg, your blood glucose doesn't go up. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, in theory, an issue unless perhaps you're also eating other carbs. And, and that's an important thing because if you do a study on Earth, like carb eaters, and yet we're on the moon, the people who don't eat carbs, um, the physiology is different. The, the findings of relative associations might be different. Even the blood tests might be different, and it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing in a different metabolic context. Um, so uh, sure, there's an association, but is it relevant? Is it high enough in, in um, relevance to make me change my clinical advice? No. No. If you want to reverse diabetes, cut the carbs down, you have all the eggs you want because this is a different type of study that he's looking at in general, too. I I mean, in total. (laughs) Which is that there's two conclusions that I want you to walk away from this video with. Number one, if you do not have pre-existing diabetes, there is a significantly increased risk for the development of type 2 diabetes as your intake of eggs increases. When you go from eating zero eggs per week to one egg per day, the risk of developing diabetes increases by as much as 58%. And in the context of what other things that you're eating, the, that carbohydrate kind of diet, and it never mentions that, which is a problem. I mean, you have to, at any study at the end, the conclusion should say under the conditions studied. And uh, um, in the context of low-carb diets with lots of eggs, we can reverse type 2 diabetes. Can increase from there depending on the type of study that you're looking at. So if you don't have diabetes, then eggs are not considered a safe food for you because you increase your long-term risk for the development of high blood glucose insulin resistance and type 2 down the road. But if you are living with pre-existing diabetes, then eating eggs is actually more detrimental to you because the more eggs you consume, the higher your fasting blood glucose will go, the higher your risk of stroke becomes, the higher your risk of a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, and the higher your risk of all-cause mortality. So even though eggs look cute and they're fun and you can decorate them and you can have Easter egg uh, hunting contests and and enjoy the culinary delights that come along with eggs. I really want you to understand that regardless of whether you're living with or without diabetes, they're not considered a safe food. But what's more important is that if you are living with diabetes, then your risk for the development of other complications increases significantly. Well, so again, the language of it's not safe, I I would reserve that for... um... Oh, a bad, bad meat that gives you gastroenteritis or something, some food poisoning. But um, no, so deviled eggs, hard-boiled eggs, omelets, frittatas, quiches, custard squares, egg muffins, egg bites, uh, these coffee places. They're great low-carb choices. And in the context of a low-carb diet, actually reverses type 2 diabetes. So I guess if you're, you're not considering doing a low carb diet or, or you know, you're not one of my patients, that might apply to you. But if you're going to be cutting out all the other carbs, reversing your metabolic issues, uh, and I wouldn't worry about eggs. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> um, this ha- hasn't changed my, my teaching. And it's because it comes from nutritional epidemiology type of research. Hope that's helpful. If you like Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. And if you don't have my top 10 tips to start keto right, please check in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And check out adapterlifeacademy.com.